In this week's Friday Focus, I'm going to talk to you about how to say no. So if you're someone that's constantly saying yes to shit that you just don't actually want to be doing, listen up because this is absolutely for you. So before we get into how to say no, I just want to do a bit of a background. And and I think it's really, it's really important just to become aware of why you find it difficult to say no. And people generally fall into four categories. So I'm some of this that I'm taking today is coming from a book. It's called Fuck No by Sarah Knight, who's very entertaining. Her TED talk is brilliant, by the way. She's got a couple of books. But um, but it's it's just I'm just taking snippets out of hers. I haven't actually read the whole book yet. But what's really fascinating is that when we say yes to something that actually we really want to say no to, the reason you're saying yes is because you want to avoid an element of discomfort. You think saying no, for whatever reason, is going to cause you an uncomfortable emotion. What's absolutely crazy is that when you say yes to something that you don't want to do, Yes, you avoid the temporary discomfort of saying no, but you actually end up creating so much more discomfort for yourself because now you have to spend hours, days, maybe even weeks if it's a holiday, doing something that you don't want to do. So either way, you're going to feel uncomfortable especially as you start to learn the skill of saying no, it's going to require the discomfort in that immediate moment, just for those few short moments, a few minutes, whilst you're saying no. Or you can choose the long-term discomfort of doing the things that you don't want to do. So you get to decide. One is going to keep you stuck. So keep saying no Uh, sorry, keeping saying yes when you really want to say no is going to keep you spinning in that space. You're not going to change. You're not going to move on. You're not going to evolve. But when you're willing to to experience that short-term discomfort and learn the skill of saying no, then you get to grow so much more in your life. So one discomfort is going to keep you safe. The other discomfort is going to allow you to grow and create a life that you want to live. So first of all, let's just look at, I haven't put my captions on, I'm going to do that right now because I keep forgetting. Um, Captions, show captions. Right, sorry about that. So um, right now, let's look at the reason why you might be saying no. And people generally fall into four categories. And they are that you're maybe a people pleaser. You just really want people to always be happy, which is interesting because then you're never happy and you can't actually make other people happy. Their thoughts make them happy. There's the overachiever. Now, the overachiever really thinks that um, they might as well, they had better take on that job because they're going to do it the best. Um, The, the, there's also the fear of missing out, the FOMOers. This is this is me. And although I don't necessarily um, love the feeling of taking on too much at all, um, I'm really afraid of what might happen if I don't. Like, what am I going to miss out on? What what you know? What's going to happen if I don't do that thing? And then there's the pushover, and the pushover is someone that just doesn't like confrontation. I just don't like confrontation so you prefer the path of least resistance and that's usually to say yes so it's just interesting to notice are you someone that hates to disappoint others then you're the people pleaser are you someone who wants to do it because you're going to do the best job that's the overachiever Um, if you're worried about what might happen if you don't do it that's the fear of missing out And then if you just don't like confrontation, that's the pushover. What's really interesting is saying the word no takes no more energy or movement in your body than saying the word yes. 
I just want you to think about this at the moment. The easiest way, and this is how you say no. I'm going to I'm going to tell you right now. Are you ready? No. Now, sometimes it might sound like, oh, thank you for the invitation, but no. Or, you know, thank you for thinking of me, but no. I said no. I said no, and the world hasn't ended. Like, I haven't just been swallowed up into this big, huge hole. Saying no is not a problem. But if your nervous, central nervous system is really activated and like you really think this is a life or death situation, first of all, have some compassion for yourself. Just remind your gorgeous brain that this isn't a problem. Right now, this isn't a problem. And if you really can't say no, I've got a couple of other suggestions for you. So if you're the people pleaser and you find that you you just hate disappointing others, try some of these. Um, oh, you go ahead without me. You could say, oh, I don't, I don't really fancy um, fish and chips tonight. Can we maybe just pick up a salad? Um, you could say, I'm, I, I don't really want to spend my money on that. You could say I can't afford it, but I always think can't afford it is... Um, is, in, is a quite disempowering question when it comes to money, although money is a whole other topic. But you could say, oh, I, don't, I don't really want to spend my money on that. Or you could say, oh, sorry, but no, they don't quite look right. Or I don't really like that very much. So there's some ways as a people pleaser that you can decline a request. If you're the overachiever, so if you're someone that wants to take it on because you think you're going to do the better job, um, you could say something like, oh, I don't have time right now for that. Or I'm choosing not to fit that into my schedule. You could say, oh, that's above my pay grade. Like there's going to be resistance to these. And that resistance is OK, but practicing it is what's going to make you stronger at doing it. Um, you could say to someone, oh, I don't need to, I don't need to get involved in that. I trust you. And your body at that might point might go, oh my God, I don't know if I do. That's okay too. Remember you're choosing your discomfort. And you could just, you know, if you're actually on holiday, you could just say, do you know what? I'm on holiday or actually I'm spending time with my family or, um, Thank you very much for thinking of me. And I would help if I could, but I've promised my son I'm going to go and kick the ball around. If you're someone that uh, has the fear of missing out and you think, you know, you, you think something bad's going to happen if you don't go, you could start saying to yourself, I'm going to trust my instincts. So we've got this tiny little intuition in, inside of us, a tiny little voice. Your primal brain will be screaming at you because it perceives this to be a life-threatening situation, but recognizing that it's not and going, it's okay, I'm going to trust my intuition this time. You can just calm the system down a bit. You could say to yourself, oh my gosh, do you remember last time I said yes, how that went? Really wasn't good. And I think this is well about overeating and over drinking when when our brain when someone offers us food and we're like oh I don't want to miss out on the experience of that cake you could or the experience of trying that cocktail you could be like do you remember last time what happened you were sick for days <laughs> um so reminding yourself actually that primitive part of you doesn't doesn't actually recognize the long-term consequences um you could choose there will be other chances like you could say, I really can't make it this time, but please think of me next time because it might be completely different. Um, you could say to yourself, do you know what? I'm going to do me and that's okay. Like for me now to go out to a nightclub, maybe there would be times where I, was, I would love it, but I don't want to do that anymore. I don't drink alcohol, so I don't want to go out and get bollocks anymore. But some some of my friends still do. So I'm like, brilliant. You go, you do you, I'll join in the next activity. Now, if you're someone that doesn't like confrontation, 
um, and you prefer to um, be like the path of least resistance and you want to be the pacifier. Um, you could say, if you just outright no doesn't work for you, you could say, I'm just not comfortable with that. And someone might disagree, but that's okay too. Disagreeing with someone isn't a problem. You could choose that. I, I disagree with my husband all the time. It's never a problem. I agree with him a lot more, but disagreeing is not a problem. So you could just say, I'm just not comfortable with that. Um, you could say to yourself, I'm worth more than this. Like if you're doing something that you really don't want to do in order to keep someone like to to keep someone else happy or to pacify the situation because you don't want them to get angry. Think of the damage that you're doing to you. So you could just say, I'm worth more than this. Um, and you could just decide that you're you can deal with their outbursts. Like if someone actually gets angry at you, you could just decide. So this is what I do sometimes. If you've watched the Twilight series, like the Twilight sagas with um, Edward, Bella and Jacob, I love them. Um, but when she turns into a vampire, this is going to be really weird if you've never watched the films or read the books. But if when she turns into a vampire, her, her skill as a vampire is to project a protection. And I can't imagine that. I kind of imagine that as a wobble bubble ball. So one of those soft, gooey balls that come in and out. I imagine that I've got that around me and it can come and it can go. So I can hug somebody and it comes in, but it's still protecting me from any, any negativity that I don't necessarily want to take on. So you can imagine that around you. You can imagine that you are literally immune to their anger because you've got you. So I really hope that's helped you. And if nothing else, just think, which discomfort do I want to experience? The temporary discomfort of saying the shortest word ever? No. Or do you want to have the discomfort of saying yes, and then the days, the hours, the weeks of discomfort that doing what you've said yes to brings? There is no right or wrong but you do get a choice. You get to choose. And I think that is the most powerful. And sometimes you might choose to say yes. I don't like cats. I'm sorry, I'm a dog person. I don't like cats. But I choose to say yes to feeding my neighbor's cat because actually I want to help my neighbor out. So there are times when we say yes to things that we don't want to do because that's the type of person we want to be but making that decision very deliberately and very consciously. I have also said no to her at times because I haven't wanted to do it and that's okay too. But when we say no from a defensive, justified, angry, fearful kind of place, it's not gonna co come across very well. But when you sort of relax down, you come at it with compassion for yourself and you're like, oh, thank you so much, but no, not right now. Or can we choose another date? Or maybe we could go to a different restaurant. So I really hope this helps you. And if you need any further help, this is what I do. I am an expert at helping you manage your mind. And when you manage your mind, you get to choose the life that you want to live. Have an amazing week. And if you like what you've heard, subscribe so that you can hear other updates from me and if you're thinking there's somebody in the else in the world that needs to hear this share this with them bye